three weeks ago, I got a call from a fellow by the name of Zach in California about a newly public company named Grocery Outlet Holding. I told him I need to do some homework. I've never been to one of these. As it turns out, this story is pretty darn intriguing, but maybe not so intriguing that it's worth buying, at least at these levels. So tonight I want to play Know Your IPO, because at the very least, Grocery Outlet is certainly worth getting familiar with. So what is this thing? Okay, Grocery Outlet runs a chain of discount supermarkets called Grocery Market Bargain Outlook. Hey, they offer terrific deals, and they try to create a treasure hunt shopping experience. Remember, think of Ollie's as one of those. People like them. Costco has that. So what kind of deals do they offer? Management says their flexible sourcing model allows them to sell name brand products at a 40 to 70% discount to what you'd find at a traditional supermarket. Wow. I, I need you to think of this company as an off-price chain not unlike TJX or raw stores, except it's in the grocery business. They have a terrific centralized sourcing department that exists to opportunistically buy up nationally branded products at deep discounts. And that's how the company keeps giving its customers such ridiculously low prices. Oh, I love this concept because retailers need to be online or off price if they want to win in this environment. Now, I called Grocery Outlet a chain a second ago. It may be overstating things a bit. Each store is run by independent operators who have the leeway to personalize their locations. Basically, it's like a franchise-based supermarket. The people who operate each store are small business owners, which gives them much more of an incentive to do a good job. It's kind of a neat model. Even better, Grocery Outlet is exactly the kind of regional to national growth story that Wall Street tends to get super excited about. In 2006, they had 128 stores, mostly on the West Coast. Now they have 323 stores on both the West Coast and in Pennsylvania. Because of that expansion, the company's sales have tripled. Meanwhile, they put up 15 straight years of positive same-store sales, including some incredible numbers during the Great Recession. Hey, listen to this. When the economy was down in the dumps in 2008-2009, Grocery Outlet posted 12.3 and 14.7% same-store sales, respectively. These numbers make it crystal clear that this is the kind of trade down play you want to own in a slowing economy. This is even better than Dollar Tree and Dollar General. Although we don't really have that kind of economy right now where the consumer seems to be doing just fine. Maybe there's no need to trade down. That's a principal glitch in the story. Still, you can understand why so many money managers would salivate over a discount supermarket chain with a regional and national growth narrative. No wonder people bought this stock hand over fist when it came public a little over a month ago. The grocery outlet deal was supposed to price between $15 and $17, but they had to raise the range to $18 to $19, and even then, that wasn't enough, with the IPO eventually pricing at $22. It's a big jump because there was such demand. As soon as the stock started trading, it popped to $31, although it pulled back, uh, closing its first day at $28 and change. However, in the month since IPO, Grocery Outlet's been a powerhouse. This thing has rallied more than $10. Today, it's at $39.25. Wow. A big chunk of that move came last week when a number of analysts initiated coverage of the stock with a buy. More on that in a minute. Now, before we get into what Wall Street's been saying, let's have a look at the numbers ourselves. Thanks to a combination of new stores and low to mid single digit same store sales growth, Grocery Outlet has been able to deliver low double digit revenue growth for years, up 12% in 2016, up 13% in 2017, up 10% last year. Although the sales have decelerated, 10% growth is still pretty darn spectacular for a grocer, especially in an environment where so many of its peers have been struggling with cutthroat competition. We've been recommending none of these stocks, and we think something like Kroger, it's too tough. Meanwhile, Grocery Outlet's been profitable since 2016, although the earnings have fluctuated as they're still scaling up and expanding. Aside from that, though, the name of the game here is consistency. For years, the company's put up 20 to 30 new stores annually with steady low to mid single digit comps and steady 30 percent gross margins, what they make after the cost of goods sold. And we saw the same thing in the first quarter of this year. I like consistency. Oh, it's a good company. But it, it, is it also a good stock? Well, last week, the quiet period ended, which allowed the brokerage houses involved in the grocery outlet IPO to initiate research coverage on it. They were generally pretty positive. The stock caught five hold ratings, four buys. Oliver Chenick Cowan, whom we usually know from his department store coverage, had one of the most bullish calls. He gave Grocery Outlet a $42 price target. Why? Because it's a very well-run off-price chain, and that allows the company to give the customers incredible deals 
which in turn means they can take tons of market share. Assuming grocery outlet continues to grow its footprint by 10% per year, with low single-digit same-store sales increases, stable gross margins, Chen thinks the company can generate earnings growth in the mid-teens. Don't have a lot of those. That's spectacular for a supermarket. And you know I love Chen's work. Long term, he argues that Grocery Outlet has the potential to grow from 323 locations, which is really about the number of locations Whole Foods had. Eh, a little bit less when Whole Foods got a bid from Amazon. Uh, right, he thinks they could grow to 4,500 from that. 4,500 nationwide. I mean, these guys are already the largest operator in the oil price grocery space, which means they're often the first ones to get the call when fruit producers need to clear out their excess inventory. I think Chen makes a compelling case. In a lousy economy, grocery outlet would be the perfect kind of stock to buy. It's exactly the kind of trade down play that benefits from a weaker economy. But right now, the consumer is doing just fine. No urgency to buy. And if there's no urgency, it's tough to justify the stock's valuation. Right now, grocery outlet is pretty darn expensive. It sells for 66 times this year's earnings estimates. Remember, it has earnings. 50 times next year's numbers. Grocery outlet's an extremely well-run supermarket chain. I'm giving them that. But it's trading like a high-flying tech stock. Consider the comparisons. When you look at the earnings say, estimate for that one I mentioned, Kroger, that trades at nine times. Nine times. Sprouts, 13 times. Target, 14. Even Kramer Fave Costco sells for only 33 times, if you use the word only. Uh, you know, five below. Another one of these rapidly growing companies, that, that, that's a good comparison. It's still cheaper. Now, compared to these other outlets, grocery outlet has spectacular growth. The earnings are expected to triple this year, although in 2020, Wall Street's betting will slow to 32%. And over the next five years, it could be more like a 19% on average number. Those are great figures for a grocery store chain, but they're not worth paying 50 times earnings. Plus, don't forget, grocery outlet is still unproven. Uh, something like Five Below is tested. It's growing in earnings at a 19% clip. It's valued at only 33 times earnings. If we value grocery outlet like Five Below or Costco, it would be a $25 stock, far below its current price of $39.25. And that's what you have to think about, the compares. Of course, if you really believe in the regional and national growth story, or you think the broader economy is cruising for bruising, then you could justify paying for the premium. But how much of a premium? I could theoretically justify paying 40 times earnings for a company with a long-term growth rate near 20, uh, although that still only gets you to $31.20. In short, grocery outlet, the stock, it's ahead of itself. The bottom line, when Zach in California asked me about grocery outlet three weeks ago, the stock was a buy. I wish I had just said it, but I need to do more research. Up here, though, grocery outlet is an intriguing company with an exorbitantly priced stock, and I just can't count as chasing it. I guess I could summarize by saying I love the discount grocery story. I just want a discount on the price of the stock. Let's go to Joe in Georgia. Joe. Yeah. Good evening, Mr. Kramer. And a booyah back to you, sir. I like that. What's up? Well, I'd like to give a shout out to my fellow nurses at the VA hospital. And I have a serious question for you. Good shout out. Yes, go ahead. (laughs) Based on your assessment of the work IPO not that long ago. I did take your advice and did not go over $40. I picked up 100 shares at $40 a share. Watched it drop down to 20% below its IPO, up today to about 17.5% below its IPO. My serious question to you, sir, is what do I do now? Which way do I go with this stock? Okay, a special shout-out from me to the VA and the nurses and all the doctors. They were all very nice to my late father. Uh, who went there, I don't know, every day because it was so much fun. I'm not kidding. Okay, here's the deal. Uh, this stock is up at buck ninety five today, and uh, we're talking about Slack. And I think that Slack is terrific, and I would, I would say it's fine to buy more. Obviously, I don't like to buy up two bucks, but Slack is going to be a very big disruptor, and it should never have fallen from 40 to here. So I like it. All right, grossly outlet is a spectacular growth story, but it's already run up a lot since its IPO. You know what? I say wait for the market to give you a pullback for adding it to your shopping cart. Much more Mad Money ahead. I'm focusing on the giants in retail that are embracing the competition from Amazon when I go off the charts. Now, I can't blame anyone for being confused about the price of oil. I'm helping you make some sense of the action. And all your calls rapid fire in tonight's edition of The Lightning Round. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? 
head to madmoney.cnbc.com.